How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So I wasn't sure if I was going to cover this one, but somebody asked how I did it. So I decided to go ahead and make a tutorial and that is how I did the orbiting camera in the Ender Pearl Coral animation. So uh, I thought it might be a helpful tip for you guys. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we're going to spawn in a camera. Let's go ahead and get that in there and let's set it up in our scene. Hang on, let's select this and we'll back out. Come on, wait a minute. What is this? I don't know how this guy here. Anyway, let's go ahead and bring the camera out. And there's two ways to do this feature here. This is uh, this little tricky do, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so there's actually a built in way into the camera. And if you look over here, you'll see it says rotate around a point. So if I click that, then you'll see that the camera moves and we get this little line here. And what that is, is this point represents what the camera will be orbiting around and you get individual controls with the orbit here. If I move this, you can see in our view here, let's make that a little bit bigger. You'll see here that the camera orbits around this point and we can actually make it go around this way and you get these different uh, parameters here as well. If I zero these out, these are for our orbiter and these of course are for the camera so that's a pretty easy way to do it the only thing is it has a couple of limitations really only one limitation but um i counted as two because there's an advanced thing you can do to get some more features sucked out of my animator so uh the first thing here is if you notice when i go to rotate it stops at 90 degrees it doesn't let me uh pull the camera all the way around like you know if if you wanted to you may not really want to very often but if you wanted the camera to kind of do this whole loopy do and then end up upside down on the other side of a character or something well unfortunately this doesn't allow you to do that it, it only goes to 90 degrees kind of locks you down but you may notice on this one it actually allows you to go in any number of ways you can just keep circling it it's only the one that tilts vertically that uh, stops you like that. And if you want to use this, then you have this parameter here, rotation point distance, and you can increase that or decrease it depending on how you want to move the camera. And just like as usual, you would move the camera around with your parameters or you can use it over here and it'll move that point and you can kind of fine tune it to be where you want it to be. However, my preferred way of doing this is using what you might would call folders. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this feature off. Now it's going to put our camera right back where we wanted it and or where it's supposed to be. And what I'm going to do is bring in a folder, if I can figure out where they exist. And let's go ahead and just name this camera controller just because. All right. So as you can see, we have a folder here and it's nowhere to be seen because it's way down there. So what we're going to do is bring the folder up to where we want it to be, which is, let's, uh, let's say we're at about, right about here. Let's just say we wanted to orbit around this pole. So we'll go ahead and position this. And to make this a little easier, as you may notice, we have the camera nowhere in the scene. Uh, and that is because we had the camera's position vastly different from where the folder spawned. So when the camera was parented to the folder, the camera went crazy. All right, that's the best way I know how to explain it. I don't know, I lost my train of thought there. Anyway, we're gonna zero out the camera's position because it's inheriting the folder's position, all right? So when you do that, now they're locked together and we can see what both of them are doing at any given time. And this is gonna help us kind of position our folder where we want to. Uh, to make a little note here, when I did the Ender Pearl Quirrell, I actually used a cube. Like I just spawned in a basic cube here and uh, use that so I could actually have a visual of where it was. But, you know, you have to remember to make it invisible and it's kind of a couple extra steps. So if you can get away with using the folder, I recommend it. Anyway, so now that we've got our folder positioned, let's actually, uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna move it a little bit in a better position here. Let's have it go like right, right around here, about midways on this odd flag thing. All right, so now that the folder's in position, I can grab the camera and drag it out. Now, obviously we don't have a line to see like we do with the uh, the rotation point that's built into the camera. So we just kinda have to eyeball things. It's a little less, uh, you know, refined, but we get a little more control and a few more options at our disposal. So now all I have to do is just rotate 
the folder and you can see the same thing happens. But I also can rotate it vertically and have the camera just spin. Wow, that is nauseating. <laughs> as many times as I want, as far as I want. So that this, in my opinion, is far superior to uh, anything you can do with the built-in uh, rotation point thing, thingamajig. And you can also, you also have this rotation here where you can go side to side, which is also not a feature within the built-in version. So now that we got that basic stuff covered, uh, one extra thing that folders can help you do. Now I've planned to probably do a more advanced tutorial on this in the future, but for now, just to give you a little taste of it, how this can be used, and this is actually what I did with the Ender Pearl Quirrell, you may have noticed that the text was kind of up in different positions and I had the camera rising as well as orbiting and then at the end of the end of, you know we're at the end of that intro the camera kind of zoomed out and panned up and it looked a little bit smoother than what you might be able to accomplish with just the camera by itself like the, obviously the orbiting was quite smoother than anything you could accomplish without doing that but anyway uh, so let's go ahead and kind of simulate that so let's go ahead and move our folder I'm just gonna take it and bring it down. Gonna kind of do a similar thing. Have it right around the pole here. It looks pretty okay to me. And we're gonna take it and just have it rotate, let's say 360 degrees. So let's just go ahead and put in 360. And what happens is obviously it just rotates like this, which is fine, that works. That works pretty well. But what we can also do here is I'm gonna use the folder. Now you could use the camera to do this, but let's just uh, do what we can with the folder to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. And we're gonna raise it up. So now what you get is the cameras rising and orbiting at the same time. Now obviously this could be done with the, uh, the built-in camera thing, but at this point we're gonna show what can be done differently. So let's say we want the camera, the folder for the camera to kind of have one of these transitions. So we're going to do an ease in and ease out. So that way it kind of slowly starts and then it goes and then it slowly comes to a stop. I actually don't like it stopping right there. I'm going to rotate it even farther because, because I want to. Let's have it go right around there. All right. So we got that going there and it does this ease in and ease out thing. So the thing is, is with transitions in Minimator, if you want to use like say two effects at once, you can't really do that because they'll interrupt each other. So let's say if I wanted to have the folder kind of like move out at this position and get a little bit further away, then what happens is it starts out and it uses that transition and then it kind of stops and then it uses the transition again to go back to the next point. And obviously that kind of sucks and we can take this middle one and make it a linear transition uh, and do like little finessing with the transitions to kind of get different effects and stuff. But it's just, it makes it a little bit more difficult and sometimes even impossible to get the effect that you want. So let's say with the camera here, we're going to take it and leave it at its default position there. And then we want it to, let's just say zoom in for some reason at this point and then zoom back out to, uh, well, let's actually copy paste this one. We wanted to zoom back out here and we can use these linear transitions or whatever. And as this happens, these two things happen at the same time and it's smooth as butter, man, because we don't have these transitions conflicting with each other. Uh, you can also do similarly if I use transitions. Let's have it go with this ease in and ease out. And we can watch this and see what this looks like. Now you have to play with this. This may not look 100% the way you would want to, but it's definitely an improvement over how the other one looks. So you can see how that looks just completely smooth as the camera does its thing while the folder is doing its thing, if that makes sense. So uh, like one thing you can do, like what I did with uh, the Ender Pearl Quirrell, is at the very end here, I wanted to have you know, let's say I wanted to have the camera kind of move after the folder has stopped. So with a normal transition here, like for say for the folder, if I want to move it afterwards, 
then what happens is, and I want to keep that ease in and ease out transition. So what's going to happen here is it's going to go and then it's going to stop and then start going again. But if I want that to be a completely smooth motion there, what I can actually do is just kind of have the camera do it with the, uh, the folder not having to move anymore. So we're going to take the camera and move it over. And let's even have it kind of pan down just a bit and we'll see what this looks like. All right, so we get the same effect here, but that is because of this keyframe right here. So what we may want to do is we'll bring this in so that these two keyframes, like where the folder stops, the camera's not stopping its motion at the same time. So what we'll get is a more smooth action. Obviously this can be played with, there's any number of ways you can do this. This is just the basic principles of kind of offsetting your keyframes so that things don't happen at the exact same time, thus noticing the seams between your movements. So as you can see there, that's a totally uh, much better, totally much better <laughs> uh, than what you would normally get. And let's say I want to really kind of move the camera and do some, some craziness. Let's have it come over here and pan out. So the effect you get with this is the camera comes up, it's spinning around, and then it just comes out and it's coming over and zooms over like that. And like that's obviously not a very good uh, bit of cinematography there, but it's a heap better. It's, it's actually a smooth motion that occurs. And uh, let's see if we can do something a little more complex. All right, guys, so I went ahead and set up a little camera move here to give you guys a, an example of what I'm talking about as far as like a more advanced movements you can do with this. So the idea is you may you want to move from one camera position to the next without there being an obvious seam between that position and where it ends and where the next movement begins. And that's really difficult without using an additional folder or folders because you can get really complicated with this. Um, to get smooth camera angles. So if you watch what I've done here, I have a few different moves going on at once and it looks relatively smooth. Obviously you can smooth it out a little bit more, but we have the camera going up, it's spinning, and then it comes in, it's going down, and it just continues, and it's one solid motion and the camera just continues going down and it looks like just one good solid movement but what we actually have happening here, if I don't actually click the wrong thing, is the camera, like what we have is the folder is going up and it's spinning. And then at this point, we use a lot of the ease in and ease out transitions here uh, and we offset these so you can't see the seam. Like since the camera is moving independently of the folder, we can offset its transitions with the folders and thus mask the seams in each movement. So the Basically, the folder is only coming up and then going back down. That's all that's going on here, and it's using the ease in and ease out transitions. Now, it depends on your movements. You don't have to use those. It's just the easiest way that I've found to get the results that I want, uh, in generally speaking. And what the camera is doing here, basically, is not much. I've adjusted the position here. You can see the values there uh, at this point. So there's not a whole lot going on here. But then at this point, the camera is moving quite a bit and becoming closer to the folder. If you can see that there, the camera actually moves in on its own independently and follows the folder down. And then the folder stops here and I've animated the camera to continue past the folder and keep going down and like following the ladder. So basically it's just offsetting the keyframes and using the folder and the camera or folders and the camera independently with each other, offsetting their keyframes and producing very smooth and delicious results. And uh, obviously, like I said, you can do a lot more than this with this uh, technique here. This is just a really bad example. <laughs> um, but you can have a, lot, a scene like where the camera is following a character for a long extended duration, period of time, things, words, and uh, never notice that the camera, you know, it stops, it turns, there's no jerkiness, it's a very fluid and consistent motion. Anyway, that's the uh, the best, worst way I can come up with to explain it, and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. I hope it inspired you and gave you some ideas for things that you can do for yourself and your own animations. If so, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. 
Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video.